if you've been around for a long time, you may recall during the Unity days, Canonical was working on a smart TV version of Ubuntu and Unity. Here we have a 13 year old video. Hey guys, this is Austin reporting live from, from Austin Evans. So alongside this, they're working on smartphone versions and they were doing this whole convergence thing where they wanted the same desktop, the same operating system to be used across all of your devices. Now, obviously, they kind of abandoned that goal, and this isn't really a thing anymore. Especially this one, most people don't even remember this existed. For a project like this to work, you really needed manufacturer support. And by this point, a lot of companies were spinning up their own garbage. Google TV was well established, which then became Android TV. Apple TV came out in 2007. Nobody used it back then, but it already existed and was already becoming very well established and Canonical's thing kind of went nowhere. But there is another smart TV-like device which a lot of people do like to use, a home theater PC. And in this space, there is a lot of software to choose from. Did you know that Plasma Big Screen exists? Yes, KDE Plasma, Plasma Big Screen. I wouldn't be surprised if the answer was no because I don't think most Plasma developers realize this exists. And there's a good reason for that. It's kind of been abandoned, and right now, no one officially supports it. There are packages for it. I think it's on the AUR. But, like, no official support whatsoever. And besides the fact that until very recently, nobody was working on the project, I think another part of the reason is uh, this is the state it was left in. It's not unusable, it's not horrible, but it's very clear that it was taking part of the Breeze design and had not fully adopted a TV interface yet, a TV design, because this is literally just the regular desktop Breeze bar. And these buttons here, they work. They exist, you can see them, but they're not very visually appealing. And I'm not blaming anyone for this. There were people being paid to work on this originally. People stopped being paid to work on it. They stopped working on it, and then they didn't finish it. That's kind of how we got here. And then recently, this blog post was made, diving in to Plasma Big Screen. Somebody decided to come along, a Plasma Mobile developer, and revive the project, basically. I've noticed that in the past few months, the Plasma Big Screen project had some interest from people wanting to contribute, but there have not been any active KD developers working on the project. Since I have some time off school, having just graduated university, I decided to take a swing at improving the project for a week. And improve it, they did. Now, it's very far from perfect. Obviously, someone's gonna say, oh, what about contrast issues? See, you have a white icon and a white background. Yes, it is not perfect, but remember, we went from this to this. Baby steps. Baby steps as things gradually improve. This is a much, much needed improvement. There's also issues with text coloring and background colors, like the jellyfin one right here. This shade of... Lilac? B what, I don't, whatever color you want to call this, blends in way too much with the icon, and then this blue seems kind of cheap. It seems kind of like someone picked a color and then just slapped it on there. It doesn't really align with the level of contrast you see for this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. I know there's some fancy color math you can do to work out how much contrast you want to have, but again, even with these issues, it's still much better. Now, a bit of background on the project. This is a Plasma project. This isn't something inspired by Plasma or anything like that. This is based on the Plasma desktop shell, and at a point, was actually part of the Plasma release. For a very brief point, because, you know, the work kind of ended. But it was part of the release at one point. As for the origin of the project, I'm not able to find any information better than what the dev here has. From what I know, it was originally developed with Minecraft in mind, not Microsoft, 
Mycroft. You probably have no idea what this is because the company behind it does not exist anymore, which was an open source virtual assistant. They even had hardware developed for it, but unfortunately, the company shut down in recent years. The work by the developers at the time appears to have been sponsored by Blue Systems, Blue Systems you may recognize because this is where the Valve contract for doing KDE work used to live until it moved over to Tech Paladin. Plasma Big Screen emerged back in 2020, which was a great time to make random projects and do random things because a lot of people had a lot of extra time back then. And uh, when they stopped having as much time, you know, things stop being as important to work on. Uh, this is probably one of those projects. Back when development was active, it provided a TV-friendly launch to launch Linux applications and even had its own mini apps known as Mycroft Skills. These can be downloaded from the KDE store, the place where you get add-ons and things like that. A TV-friendly web browser, that is the Aura browser and a media player. This is the Plank player. The project itself was released during the Plasma 5 release cycle, but got dropped with Plasma 6 in 2024 because it was not ported in time for the mega release. About a year ago, the project was ported to Plasma 6 and QT6, but has not received a release since being removed from the Plasma release schedule, which explains perfectly why it looks like this. It was ported from QT5 to QT6, and the styling was never actually completed. Yes, you still want it to look like Plasma, but you don't want it to look like the desktop components just slammed into a TV interface. In the same way, you wouldn't want that done on Plasma Mobile either. Maybe if the project was more established and more important, this could have been a blocker to releasing Plasma 6, but it was never really that important of a project anyway. It was always more of like a, hey, we can do this. This is cool. Not something like core to KDE Plasma. Now, remember what I said earlier. This is someone who had literally just graduated university. So this is prime time for finding a project like Plasma Big Screen, noticing there'd been Basically, no activity since the initial QT6 has Plasma 6 port and the Matrix channel had no active developers. This is a perfect time to come along since you already work on Plasma Mobile to see what you can do since... There's nobody here that's gonna stop you anyway. First up, we have some housekeeping. It says I added a readme, but there already actually was one there. It's just... It wasn't very good, there wasn't much information in it, and, you know, there probably should be more said in there so people kind of, you know, know what they're looking at. And also a reused license checker to the CI. I then ported the QML library to be a declarative plugin and removed a bunch of abandoned code folders that were not used anywhere in the code base. So I'm assuming that this is probably stuff that was either being worked on or stuff that was part of the QT5 version that in the port they just didn't clean up. Next is the interface. So I showed you this one earlier and yeah, it's not, it's not great. We also have these ones for the settings. It's functional. It works. It's not the desktop interface. But it's not very pretty. Let's just be completely honest here. However, they weren't working from nothing because some mockups were made in Figma. It's just those mockups never fully got implemented. So I guess just work off the Figma, adapt things to some slight changes in design language, and uh, go from there, I guess. And that's how we got something considerably better. Not perfect, not fully done, but a lot more in line with what they were going for. And personally, I think it looks pretty good. 
Obviously, yes, there are still issues, and yes, you can point things out and all this good stuff, but it actually looks like a TV interface now. I flatten the layout to reduce visual complexity, removing panel backgrounds and shadows where possible, while adding tooltips for the indicators. I then added an expanded clock view for when the user is at the top of the application categories based on the mockups, which shrinks when the user goes down the view. I port the application list to list view and delegate caching rather than having all elements having their coordinates positioned manually to improve performance. The background now also blurs when it is not the main focus of the UI. And this didn't exist before. This is a search interface based on Krona, adapted for the TV interface, and frankly, it's totally fine. Yeah, it does what a search interface should be doing. Krona, it's not my go-to, but for this environment, I think makes a lot of sense. Now, system settings are a very big one because before, um, where is it? This one? I, I don't even have words to describe the state it was in before. I redesigned the system settings view to have a sidebar with categories with a simple two pane look. The settings modules had a lot of hard-coded UI elements and layouts. I decided to make a small component library to build TV-focused UIs that still look breeze-like, and ported all of the settings modules to it. I moved away from horizontal layouts to vertical layouts for content, and put a heavy emphasis on sidebars for interacting with individual delegates. I think it looks pretty nice. Here is the demo. Let's jump ahead just a little bit. Honestly... Honestly... It looks pretty good. Now, it's obvious what it's inspired by, right? It's very heavily inspired by what the Steam Deck is doing or what, or what Big Picture Mode is doing. It's very heavily inspired by the modern window settings menu. That's not a complaint, though. That is not a complaint whatsoever. This is so much better. On a TV interface, I wouldn't expect the full settings menu of KDE Plasma. It wouldn't make sense. A lot of those settings just don't make sense. You can add more things into this though, right? Like there's a good baseline here to expand it as you realize more settings might have value. The UI feedback for starting an application was broken, so I decided to overhaul it to be something similar to what we use on mobile. So basically when you open up an application, there'll be like a little color thing with the icon there, and then it goes to the application. Yeah, totally fine. Just having something there, knowing that the application didn't immediately crash. To know if these changes are really going to make sense, you need to run it in a suitable environment. Running it on a powerful workstation, on a PC monitor, that's great and all for testing, but you need to run it on a low power device with a TV as an output. So I used a Raspberry Pi 5, I flashed PostMarket OS onto it, and then manually compiled and installed the Plasma Big Screen shell. I don't want to know how long that took to compile, so I'm glad they didn't say. As for anybody else, if you do not want to do that, there is a package in their nightly repo. Also, there is an AUR package as well, though the dev has not tested that. So... Nobody else has it yet. But hopefully, maybe, depending on how things go, there will be more packages. And of course, it functions, it's Plasma, and if you ask me... That looks pretty good on a TV. But there is a bit of a problem. We don't have the luxury of how it worked during its heyday. We don't have access to the Mycroft skills, which provided things like a YouTube and SoundCloud application. Luckily though, there are Linux applications you can use, and because this is literally just Plasma and running on a Linux distro, you could install anything you want anyway. But as for things that actually work, in this environment and designed to be run on a TV, there are things like Kodi, Vacuum Tube, Jellyfin, and of course they had to go and try some games on it like Super Tux and Super Tux Cart. Something you could probably do pretty well is run Steam on this and then have it open in big screen. So you go from Plasma big screen into Steam big picture. I keep saying big screen. Steam big picture. So I don't see any reason why that wouldn't just work just fine. Now, whilst the interface is designed for a controller and designed for a remote, you don't just magically get support for those. Something needs to provide it. So with that, they made use of something known as Plasma Remote Controllers, which contains a daemon that is able to take both game controllers, e.g. Xbox controllers or... 
here we go. I have my 8-bit my Do controller over here, which eventually I might make a video on. I'll get around to it. And TV remotes over CEC on HDMI. And then map them to keyboard arrow keys. It also has a settings module to configure the shortcuts. I was able to successfully test having an Xbox controller connected with the daemon online and having it map the arrow buttons to arrow keys on the system. I wasn't able to, however, test the CEC support, which would allow buttons on TV remotes over HDMI to map to arrow keys. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work, assuming the dependency is actually, like, functional. But for me, I would be using a controller anyway. I do not like to interact with anything using a TV remote. I will press a number and the source button, and that is all I want to touch it for. Now, as I was saying before, this person is not the only developer. Also, shout outs to Seshan and user8395, which is totally not a burner account name that they ended up sticking with for way too long. <laughs> the real user, 839... Maybe there's an inside joke here that I don't know, but that feels like a burner account name they just never got rid of. Of course, as I've been saying, there's still a lot of things to do. Even outside of the UI, there's still other things to be done. There isn't a virtual keyboard to input text. So if you want to do that, you actually have to use an actual keyboard, which is a problem if you want to use a controller, right? Like, that's something that does need to be resolved. Also, the Plaza Remote Controller settings module is not properly ported and tested on big screen. So, um, you can use a controller, but, like, <laughs> you can't type and you can't configure it. So... It's a work in progress. We do not have any framework to design TV-based UIs in KDE. Aura Browser and Plank both use Qt Quick Controls and Kirigami, but have a lot of hard coding and custom controls in order to be usable on a TV. I do have a few TV-focused components for building settings modules, but that is a very narrow set of controls. So you can build them, but there's no consistent, you know, UI library where you can just say, I want the TV button, I want the TV list, things like that. That's something that needs to be done. What are the use cases we want to achieve with a TV-focused desktop environment? Do we need to also pursue making front end for various media services? There isn't a clear direction for the project at the moment beyond making it a desktop environment. In the past, this project was heavily focused on Mycroft, but that no longer exists. See, I, in its current state, it's like three people working on it, right? So if you try to take on too much too quickly, you're going to burn out with the project. You're going to basically leave it in the same state it was in before where people did some work and then it just gets left behind for a couple of years until somebody else comes along and says, hey, I want to do this. I think focusing on getting a TV interface in a really good state first and hopefully using that to sort of bring more people to want to get involved in the project and maybe then also collaborating with projects that are already trying to make TV focused interfaces for things because of the Steam Deck. And then there's the matter of getting it released again, getting it into distributions. It was dropped during the Plasma 6 rollout and we need to have the project return to the Plasma release cycle hopefully starting with Plasma 6.5. Getting it on the release cycle is step number one. Step number two is convincing people this is something they should be distributing. I am very interested in this project because, yes, if I wanted to run a home theater PC, I could run Steam Big Picture on it, but I don't want to add every single application into Steam Big Picture something closer to the level of the Linux desktop, which could then be used to launch into Steam Big Picture, I think that makes a lot of sense, actually. Maybe not for everyone, but for me, I see a lot of value there. Even if you don't just want to use it for Steam, you want to use it for media stuff and all that, I think having a project like this makes a lot of sense, and I wish the developer the best of luck. Hopefully, this goes well. Hopefully, this can become a very important part of Plasma. But what do you think? Do you think this project is going to go anywhere? Did you know this project even existed to begin with? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. Also, go subscribe. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and...
Plasma is big.